Hello and welcome to this first interview of the series Success, Crisis, New Success, where the goal is to show to men mainly, but women as well, um, how we can think and rethink, find and refine what is success for us. Um, today we have for this first interview Paul Cooper, who is actually a um, what he called a freedom coach and what does that mean is he helps people to become free emotionally with themselves and in their relationships and as he says when we become free uh, with ourselves emotionally we become free everywhere um, Paul has done this work uh, the last years and one of the things when we started to talk together that I really liked is he says at some point he realized that he wouldn't do anything that he would uh, he wouldn't do it for free. So basically, what he's doing is his true passion. Um, yes. So welcome, Paul. Oh, thanks. It's good <laughs> oh, to be here. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> um, so the first uh, question that I would like to have is, is there anything that I need to refine for my introduction? No, I think it's good. It's good? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so as, you, as, we, as we talk together before, the idea is to show the success through different angles and to inspire mm -hmm. other men for, for that. Um, so I heard that you had a... A special story, and I would like uh, for you to explain your story a bit to the people who listen to us, and how your idea of success has changed along the years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, for most people, uh, I mean, I know it was for me um, initially as I was, you know, getting out of my family's house and. Um, you know, going from a teenager to becoming a young man, like my view of success was, um, it was very externalized. It didn't, it was, uh, based on, you know, if I had certain things and if I'd like reached certain goals and like my idea of success was, there's always something out in the future, um, that I was always grasping for. And so I got married really young. I was 21 um, I was just, I was trying to do all the things that, you know, you're supposed to be doing and, and follow the prescribed method of, mm. you know, being successful. I tried the college thing for a little while and, mm. um, I, I was definitely intelligent enough to do it and, and for, in the areas that I applied myself, I did well, but I couldn't, I, I really struggled with like doing it because I wasn't passionate about it. And so um, I ended up working in restaurants, which um, well, it made me money. Like I had enough money to live, but um, I don't know. Over the, like, over the years with my wife, like, I didn't know how to be free emotionally like within my marriage and so I was building this life that I thought I should be building and I um, eventually it crumbled and mm. it like after seven and a half years my wife and I separated and mm. um, you know over those seven and a half years like we slowly kind of just like drifted apart because we didn't know how to communicate and we um, and we started fighting more and then eventually we split up and I lost the house, lost my job, like, whole world crumbled, and wow. uh, eventually I sold, I, after I signed my divorce papers, which was a year after we, a year and a half after we separated, um, I ended up selling everything I got from the divorce, just getting rid of everything down to, like, I had my computer, my bicycle, and, like, two suitcases of clothes, and that was it. <laughs> wow. Why, why did you sell everything? Um, you wanted to restart I don't know. I just said, yeah, I was just like, I just wanted to like start over oh, okay. and like completely just start building a fresh, like start from scratch, like shaking mm. the etch-a-sketch, you know, like. <laughs> wow. Um, 
And so I, and I spent all that money that I got from selling everything and went to Bali for two weeks on like a uh, 11 day guided meditation uh, to like find your soul's purpose. And um, it was a really cool experience because I grew up in a, you know, pretty fundamental Christian home. Like, I mean, not, they weren't super strict Christians, but I mean, they lived very Christian lives and, and um, I didn't, I felt like Christianity, there was a big gap between how you're supposed to be and how people actually were. And I didn't know how to bridge that gap. But when I went to Bali and um, started to explore like Eastern philosophy and, and like, um, like Taoism and Buddhism, like those type of philosophies, Mm. um, kind of gave me the tools to manage my inner and my, my inner environment. And it helped me like close that gap that I felt like Christianity was like left Mm. wanting. Um, and so I came back from Bali, um, with a much better sense of like, where I was and where I wanted to be, and I was, like, going to start over, and so the first part, the first order of business was to, like, free myself up emotionally, and what I realized was the person who triggered me the most was my mom. She, like, Mm. (laughs) and so, like, I had a hard time when she would come and visit, like, we probably couldn't spend more than like four or five days together without like one of us getting really upset or like, yeah, you know, and um, I think that's pretty typical with families. Like there's a yeah, lot of triggers there. There is a saying like that. It's like, if you know you're enlightened, just go and spend one week with your parents. Do you know this? Yeah, no, actually that's a funny story because um, when I got back to Colorado, for, I was living in Denver at the time. And so when I got back to Denver from Bali, my parents knew that I was like was losing my house and I didn't have anywhere to like I didn't have any plans like made and um, there was a girl in Colorado that like I was in love with but I still didn't know how to make the relationship work and so my mom invited me home to come back to live with like my stepdad and her and my little brother still lives there as well but um, I was like that's the last place I want to go and <laughs> Then the next day, on my Facebook feed, I saw, like, I opened my Facebook, and there it was. It was Ram Dass' quote. He was like, if you think you're so enlightened, go spend a week Uh with your parents. (laughs) I was like, damn it, that's okay. I was like, all right, that's where I have to go then. So you follow the science as well. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's cool. And and so I went, and I'm like, my intention was to, like, because at that point I had an understanding of, like, what getting triggered was and like how to start to be responsible for it. And so I went there with the intention to like, to let my mom trigger me, um, you know, as fully and just like, uh, because if there's anyone on the planet that could trigger me, like, and get to like all the triggers I had, it would be her because Mm -hmm. she's like the woman that I was closest to in the world. So, so so you went in an intentional crash course. Let's Absolutely. go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's figure out all of this shit. Uh-huh. And uh, I spent 13 months there, and like it nearly drove me insane. Like by the time I left, like I was nearly insane because like I she just like we just pushed each other's buttons, and we went both of us just like meltdown after meltdown, and like shoot, like fighting, and and like, but eventually, like we were able to move through it, and I mean. Uh, we got to the point where, like, six months into it, my stepdad came to me and he's like, dude, he's like, you got to stop. Like, he's like, you, because my mom felt like I was attacking her, even though she was the one kind of coming to me and pushing my buttons and, like, trying to tell me I needed to be different. And But when I wasn't responding the way that I used to respond, like, and I wasn't taking on her stuff anymore, like, she felt like I was attacking her. And so she, my stepdad came to me and he was like, you know, you got to start, you know, accommodating your mom. And I was like, no, I'm not going to be like, I have to be my, like, I can't 
not be myself to make her feel better. And so, but then I like, we had a really long conversation and I, and I explained to him what I was doing and why I was there and what my intention was. And, and my stepdad got it. He understood. And so he like helped hold, hold space and mediate for the, the, the next seven months. But, um, it was really challenging for, for me and for my mom. Um, but it was beautiful because by the time we were done, like by the time I left, um, my mom was still kind of mad at me when I left because yeah. <laughs> she didn't really understand what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if she still fully understands what I was doing, but we get along great now. <laughs> okay. You told her your intention when you went Yeah, out. but she didn't really get it. Like, she just thought I was being a dick. Mm. And so, but it was fine. Like, I didn't really need her to understand because I knew what I was doing and my stepdad understood. And so he could kind of, like, help, you know, hold space. And so, um, like, she maybe would have gotten a little bit more out of the process if she was consciously participating as well. She didn't want to? No, but she just wouldn't listen to me long enough to understand what I was doing. Okay. Like, she had a really hard time hearing me. Okay. And so, but yeah, now... It, I think that's an interesting thing about personality I found, and that's something that comes back in uh, relationships sometimes. It's like one of them start to be more aware of what's going on for him or herself. Mm-hmm. But not necessarily the other person. Right. And just this change, change the dynamic of the relationship. Absolutely. And, and at the end of the day, the question is like, uh, how do we evolve together if we are in the loving partner relationship? Right. To make it work for both of them. And like it's here, it's like a mother and son, but sometimes it's uh, with your girlfriend or wife or whatever. Right. And, I mean, ultimately, you don't need the other person to be, like, participating, really. Because yeah, since the way people are bond, the way people bond and attach to each other, a lot of it's unconscious anyway. And yeah. so, like, since my mom and I were already, already had a really strong bond, if I take full responsibility for how for myself and how she's showing up in my world and just and 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 like grow myself and and take responsibility for my own emotions it changes the relationship and so and then so it changes how she shows up in the relationship as well and so i don't have to i don't need her to i didn't need her to understand really um in order for me to grow and for her to like and for our relationship to grow Mm. And so now, like, it took a little bit of time after I left for, before my mom and I, like, she kind of, like, she had to, like, move through her own emotions and, like, have some space between us, like, by, by the time that I left. But now we get along better than we've ever gotten along that, that I can remember. And we don't, tr- like, I can be around my mom, I don't know, I guess I don't have any frame of reference more than, like, two weeks. I went home at Christmas time for two weeks. I was like, I spent two weeks with my family, Mm -hmm. pretty much 24-7, and my mom didn't trigger me at all, like, we just got along really well, we had some deeper conversations than we've ever had, and, and, like, it's really great. So this comes from what you said, the the fact that you were taking full responsibility? Uh Uh-huh, for my own emotions. For your own emotions. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean, concretely? Um... Like, do you have an example that could help me or people who are listening to this? Yeah, like, like what happens is, um, in relationships, a lot of times where, like, the two people start to, like, cave in on each other, um, and the relationship starts to, like, a lot of conflict starts to arrive, it arises as, as if, um, if one person is, is feeling bad, it makes the other person uncomfortable as well. And so the other person will usually try and fix the person that's feeling bad. And, but that's not really their job to fix them. And usually the reason they're trying to fix them is so that they don't feel uncomfortable. It's not because they, it, 
they they tell themselves it's because they care about the other person, but it, they don't. It's not that they care about the other person so much. It's more that they just don't want to be uncomfortable, and so they try and fix the other person. And so that's what my mom would do. My mom's a psychologist, and so she's really good at fixing people who are feeling bad. And so I came home like, and I'm like, you know, I've just lost my house, like my wife, whatever. So I'm kind of like just moving through a lot of heavy emotions, like. Mm. And my mom could feel that, and so she was always coming and trying to fix me. And <laughs> I'm like, I don't need fixing. And, but then she would push and push and push until she would find a trigger, and then I would, then I would like have an emotional reaction. And so then I would like be authentic. I, I had to learn how to like be authentic with her about what I was feeling, and also learn not to blame her for pushing my buttons, mm. because. What happens is when we get triggered, then we're like, you made me mad. Mm. And it's not really that she made me mad. Like, I was already mad, and I just didn't, I was holding on to it. And so she pushes the button, and then that anger comes out, and we blame her. But So I had to learn how not to blame her mm. and just let the emotion out. And so, I would, like, we would have these interactions where she would try and fix me until I would have a reaction. And then... I would, like, go, and I would just, like, sit and, like, move through those emotions, and then, whew, okay, like, and move through it. And while, then, while you were talking with her at the same time? Um, I mean, usually there would be leftover emotions after the conversation that I would just have to sit down and, like, mm. like let wash over my body and, like, not fight the feelings mm. and just, like, let them flow, flow through. But mm. um, the conversation's just, like... We're more like this, like kind of like butting heads to bring the emotion to the surface, and then like you'd let it. We'd let it out. Like some of it got let out in the conversations, but mostly it was just like internally processing it, separate from the interaction, mm. um, and using the interaction as like a way to like get the emotions like moving and coming up and out because there was a lot of stored emotions like mm. that were they were oh, they were affecting the way that I was operating in the world before, and. What I realized is that over the years, like, my mom had been the example of how I interacted with women. And so if I was, like, triggering and jumpy with my mom and also, and, like, letting my mom, my mom's requests of me, like, if I was letting my mom determine, like, the choices I made and so forth, then I was doing the same thing with women in my life. And it meant that it made it so that they couldn't really trust me because, and that so, and I didn't really trust myself. And so there was a conflict with the women in my life as well. And so that's part of why I went home was because I figured it, it, if my mom was willing to push my buttons and like get all that stuff out and clear that space, then it was way better to clear that with her and not ask like all my, like not ask girlfriends or, or, you know, the women that I'm, you know, dating to do it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's from from my experience uh, and understanding of this kind of work. It takes a lot of courage to, as you said, to be responsible for our own emotion and for our own stuff and our own issues. Um, and the tendency to react is so strong. And I think that's the beauty of relationships: is that we heal each other if we want to look at it this way. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's like why we try and relate to each other. To like, it's such a beautiful place to heal. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. and what you were saying is, uh, you were you were giving a nice reason why people would start to engage. It's like they have this trust issue, for instance. They don't trust mm. others, or they don't trust themselves. And so, starting to do this work uh, would help them. Is there any other advantage and benefits? Because I think to, to start in this kind of work, we need to have a really strong motivation. Unless, we are, as you did, we, we arrive to the crash. And, yeah, exactly. And well, it's a game over, let's change it. To me, I, I really believe that this kind of work is... It's like the foundation. It's the... It's, it's the spiritual foundation that whatever we're going we're gonna to create or whatever we're going to build in our lives sits on. And so if that foundation is shaky, then we, 
whatever we build is at risk of crumbling. Like, mm. you see so many times that people will build, like, they'll build this big life for themselves and then fall in love with somebody and that person just comes yeah. and, like, destroys their world, <laughs> you know, because because the foundation's shaky. Mm. And, and so to me, like, this work is, like, it's so important to have this, have like a really solid foundation, uh, and to like know yourself emotionally so that you can be yourself in the world and create the life you want. And so, okay. So I, I think it's really important when you talk about foundation, just to be very clear, um, you say like being your, be yourself in the world, knowing yourself, is it your, the foundation you're talking about? Yeah. Is there other things that are really essential for you in the foundation? Well, I think like our emotions guide us in a huge way and and what I realized through the process was that all that stuff that I had that I was holding inside was affecting the way that I saw the world and how I perceived everything. And it was affecting how I perceived other people and how what how how open my eyes were to the opportunities that were available to me. And so after I went through the work, like after I went through that 13 month, it was like, and I left home, like I was, we lived in a, my parents live in a really small town in Michigan. So I was kind of isolated as well. And which was nice. And when I came back out of that, it was really interesting because I'd been in this just like emotional vortex of like all my own stuff. And like, it was just like getting it all moving and up and out. And I went out into the world, and it was literally like a whole different place. Mm. Like, what people responded to me differently. Mm. I responded to them differently. I got to watch myself be a different person than I used to be. Mm. Not because I was trying to be a different person, but because I had, like, freed myself. Mm. And so I was, like, being more free, and people were being, like, people were nicer. People were, like, more opportunities open. Like, the world was, like, this magical place. Because I didn't have like all this stuff that I was holding inside anymore. And so I was just able to be free in the world. And so it's been really interesting since then how like I don't have to try hard to do anything anymore. Like the world just kind of like unfolds for me and I just ask for the things I want. Like not from people, but I ask like internally. Like I, when I say asking, I mean like setting intention. Mm. Um, and so when I set an intention, that's like me asking the universe for the things that I want. Mm. And so I just like set my intentions and then wait for things to show up. And then, and the world just kind of is unfolding and, um, mm. and it's really beautiful. Like, I don't feel like I have to struggle all the time anymore. Wow. That's cool. So this, this is the, I think it's good that we recap at this point just to go with this intention stuff, because it feels like it's a the new kind of success, like you had the first kind of success, the crisis, how to get out of the crisis, and then the new kind of success. That right. seems to be with the setting the intention. So basically, if I, if I hear you well, the first part is you were following what you think you should follow, follow like uh -huh. college, education, a job, uh, mm -hmm. married very early at 21 years old, um, following this path, and having issues revealing more and more with your wedding. Mm -hmm. And then after your divorce, you decided, okay, I'm going to stop this and start again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, let's try again. It makes me feel of a video game. Yeah, try exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Let's just restart. <laughs> restart. And, um, and the restart, you decided to, to go to Bali, use the Eastern... Uh, philosophy and then from that applying with your mom and and basically going to yourself to learn about yourself with your mom which was uh -huh. the biggest trigger um, just a question along the way that I was thinking before but I didn't want to interrupt is that uh, how how important is it the Eastern philosophy is it important to do this kind of work or like you were you were doing this versus your Christian education. Um, is there a limiting factor to be a Christian in your opinion? or, or? Um, At this point, no. Um, like, I don't... 
to me, when people ask me about religion now, like, I don't really subscribe to any religion at this point. Um, I feel like I have a really clear sense of my own spirituality, and I don't need religion to, you know, mandate that for me. But if people ask me about what my views on religion are, it's like, uh, Buddha gets you to the gates of heaven and Jesus lets you in. <laughs> so, Sounds cool. Um, Sounds cool. So, if, so if, if someone is Christian or Muslim or whatever, it doesn't matter to do this kind of job. No, it doesn't. Absolutely. Um, and so, I kind of use those things to help rearrange my own thinking, but now I have my own way of understanding it and my own processes. So, I explain things in a way that is like all of everything, like all of... I see it all as just like one thing. Like every, everyone's trying to explain the same thing, yes. uh, whether it's Buddhist or Christian or whatever. And so now I have an understanding of what that thing is that they're trying to explain. So I don't need the explanation so much anymore. And I think I, anybody can do it. Like the yeah, the, the Eastern philosophy just gave me a different perspective to, so that I could kind of like understand things a little bit, like with more clarity. But. Um, is it important to explain this or not so much for I mean I don't I don't think so so much because like if you just do this kind of work and understand your triggers and like really start taking responsibility for your emotions then what happens is like you get your own clarity that starts to come internally and so you don't need to look outside of yourself for it okay sounds cool too okay very good so uh, let's go back so the idea of success, crash, restart, um, trigger with mom, 13 months <laughs> intense <laughs> boxing yeah. and uh, melting down and getting out of it and obviously feeling uh, very much different with yourself, with the relationship with others and looking at yourself and, hey, I don't react the same way that I used to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, what's interesting for me now is to talk about the, this new kind of success that for you guide you at, at this moment. You are talking about setting intention and then it's unfolding naturally. Mm -hmm. um, is it the main thing that, that you would define your success at the moment or wh how would you define your success at this moment? For me, like now success is like I feel like I'm successful in that I've learned how to interact with in in the world with the world in a way or with my reality in a way that is clear to me and I understand and so success doesn't success has to, is more of like an inner thing for me now and it doesn't have anything to do with how much I have or what are the things that I have like coincidentally I am more free financially now than I used to, than I ever was before and I feel and I I mean, I don't really have that many things yet or, or at this point because just because I don't like to have a lot of stuff anymore. But I always have the things that I need and um, and money is like flowing more and more freely for me now than it ever has. And so, um, but that's not really my focus. I don't. I don't. So what, is care. Your, what is your focus? So I understand now it was. It's not an external focus now. It's a more internal focus. Mm -hmm. and my focus now is really like just relentlessly being myself like mm. um, I don't like you were saying in the introduction like I don't do anything for money that I wouldn't do for free Yeah. and I don't do anything that I don't want to do I don't <laughs> I don't make my I don't force myself to do things anymore I don't try and coerce myself or like pressure myself um like I just make clear choices and 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 use my intention to guide myself through the world, and I just kind of and it's like very free and and it feels good. And so for me, my main priority is just like always like just like experiencing myself, like as I go through the world and I feel myself in those experiences, like. It's, uh, that's where my focus is. It's more just like an inner focus. And then like the, all the things that happen around me and the experiences I have and the way I interact with the people in my life, those are kind of added bonuses and they're, they're like, it feels good and they're, they're really nice, but 
I'm not dependent on those things in order to feel complete. And so success to me is like getting to a place where I feel complete and dependent of what's going on around me. Well, that sounds cool. <laughs> that sounds pretty <really> cool. <laughs> I think ultimately as men or probably women as well, I think women even more, we want to feel free. We want to feel like we are aligned with ourselves and we do uh -huh. what we are, what, who we want to be and what we want to do. Right. Uh, so it feels like it's a place you are. And at the same time, I have some, you know, the, you know, the, we call that uh, avocat du diable en français, in French. It's like avocat devil, you say it in, in English. So it's, it's like, what about if... Oh, devil's advocate. Yeah, Got devil's it. advocate, yeah, this one. Uh, what about if, um, if I have big goals in my life? Can I still do this kind of thing? If I want to be rich, if I want to be... Um, I know having like this big villa with this big car, is it still possible to do this kind of work or is it completely opposite? No, I don't think there's anything wrong with those things. Um, and I think actually, I think this kind of work actually, actually makes achieving those th type of things much more realistic. Why? Uh, because like when you feel complete, then everything is like play. And so like, it's pretty easy to go and figure out, like, from this place, like, if I want to make a lot of money, I just have to go read some stuff and, like, figure out the formula and just go make money. Like, <laughs> it's not really that hard to do. Like, pretty much anybody can figure out how to market and how to do this and how to make money and, and, and do those things. Like, and there's plenty of information out there about how to do that. What what people run into problems with is when they don't when they have a shaky foundation and they're in a hurry to make money because they think the money is going to make that foundation solid. They run out into that and they keep running into problems and then they crumble and they collapse. And so, because they haven't done this, like they haven't freed themselves yet. But if you're yeah. free, then you can just go and play in the world and you can go make money, go do whatever you want to do, you know. And um, like. I understand. So if you're free, you you can apply formula and it will work. But if you're right. not really free, you can try any formula, but at some point you will sabotage yourself. Exactly. Cool. Okay. That's a good explanation. And um, the other idea that the, the other devil's advocate you, you said um, is... Um, it seems it could seem for people to that it's an egoist thing, you know. You think of yourself, and uh, it's me, me, me first. Um, why would you respond to this? Uh, to this? Well, actually, um, like I don't. It's nice because now that I'm free, I don't have to think about myself very much at all. <laughs> like I can feel myself, but I can give my focus to, like I can give my attention to the people in my life and to the experiences that I'm having. Because I'm not always having to worry about taking care of myself or like fixing myself or any of that stuff. So, like, so by having done the walk with yourself to liberate yourself, no, actually, you're more present with others, and you can exactly. you can give more to others actually. Exactly, because I don't have to think about myself because I trust that I'm that I'm creating a world that supports me and takes care of me, so I don't have to worry about me. <laughs> And so then I can be more present with everybody else. I, who wouldn't like this? <laughs> <That's> fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Um, okay. So I think we, we get the formula that, uh, of this interview, like a success, crisis, new kind of success. Um, with basically the new kind of success, if I well understand, is for you to be with yourself, to be... Um, following your own guidance um, and from that intending for things to happen and then without forcing anything, let them happening and follow, following in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I think if someone is interested in this kind of process, um, what would be your first, like your advice, how to start this kind of thing? If they want, well, okay, you, you would tell me, okay, book a session with me. <laughs> but if they don't want to book a session with you or like a, a full month's program, as I've seen that you're doing, 
um, uh, what would be the first step for them? Is it to go and, and argue with your mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, because you don't want to force that either. But what, what you want to do is like, ultimately, like if you're, if you're hearing this conversation, I'm, I'm going to speak to the audience for a second. If you're, if you're hearing this conversation and, and this type of growth is like something that you want, um, just ask for it, like set an intention that you want to like, to like take the next step. And then the, all of a sudden, like the things will start to shift and in your world and, and you'll, and the people that probably want to start happening is somebody's going to show up and start pushing your buttons. And, <laughs> and then you can work through your, start to like, be more responsible with your own emotions and like use those triggers <coughs> to start to free yourself. And everybody has that person in their life and that just kind of like irritates you and gets on your nerves and pushes your buttons. I don't know if it's your boss or your sister or, you know, your wife. A lot of times it's like someone you're in a relationship with. Yeah. And so... Actually, I wouldn't send so like somebody who's just thinking, "Oh, I want to do that." Like, I'm not. I don't. I'm not really interested in triggering you and pushing your buttons. But when normally when people come to me, it's when they've like life is. They found themselves in a, in a relationship where this kind of conflict is happening, but they don't know how to deal with it, and it's kind of just like ripped them open. Mm. And so then it's easy for me to go in and like help them make sense of it and put them put things back together. Mm. Um, but I don't like doing the like ripping open part. <laughs> So, but life will, life is more than willing to do that for you, and you usually don't have to pay someone to do that. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. But just start. But just start looking for who is it in your life. Like, you don't have to go and find someone else. Like to do it, you're just like who's present in your life. Everybody has connections in your in their life. Everyone's got somebody that like irritates them or pushes their buttons, and that's where you, that's where it starts. Is like with. Find that person, and instead of making that person wrong for pushing your buttons, like start to have an attitude, like a perspective of being grateful to them for showing you where you still have emotional work to do, and and then little by little, like they'll help free you. And the more the more capable you become of being responsible with your emotions, then the more like lessons will show up in your life to to let you, to, to help you start to free yourself. And so maybe that does guide you to a really challenging scenario like I went through. Um, and maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't, it's not going to take that much for you to be, to be free. But um, really like there's people in your life right now yeah. without having to go and look for anything that are there to like help you, teach you and, and grow you, whether they know that that's why they're there or not. They might just be, like a total jerk that's just always a pain in your ass, but that that person is there to help grow you. And if you can start to use those experiences and the and the connections that you already have in your life to help understand yourself more, then you, like that's really how it's 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 really how to do it. So basically, it's to find this person that's this intimate person that bothering us. And at the moment, we are bothered by this person. Instead of saying this is her fault or his fault, uh, it's like, what do I learn from this? Exactly. This moment, and what this person is teaching me about myself now. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is, is, is it's important to feel the feelings first. So when somebody pushes your buttons, try not to think about what you're feeling until you've felt it. And what will what, happen is, like, after you felt it, then you'll understand what was going on like, and why that was happening. If you try and figure it out before you feel it, it's a really good way to just push the emotion down. So just don't try and figure it out. If someone makes you mad, just be mad without yeah. making them wrong. Yeah. And, yeah, just, like, go, like, you know, punch a pillow or something and just be mad. And then just sit with yourself and, like, and just... Like with reflective thinking, just be like, okay, like what was that about? Like why was I really mad? And like, and clarity will come mm -hmm. after the emotion moves through. I see. And so if and we so, 
if we take an example, like a, I'm trying to think of a personal example at this moment. Um, yeah, I have, a, I have an example. Of, um, you know, I'm someone who's doing fitness all the time and, and, and love doing this. I'm kind of addicted. And um, when I see my wife or um, another intimate that I'm thinking at this moment not taking care or what I think is not taking care of himself, that I feel ag agitated, I feel triggered, you know, I feel like... Uh -huh. So is it like this kind of juice you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and, then, like. and then starting, for, for me, it's like these days is like integrating and say, okay, I have also this part of me who reject the lazy Benoit, the guy who's not taking care of himself and just want to look uh -huh. at the bright side. <laughs> right. You know? And I think it's, it's also integrating... Um, or but all this work is inte integrating or shadow or hidden. Path. Absolutely. And when we integrate it, then we can we can feel free, as you said, and then guide where we want to we go. But right, we and and it's important too. Like if when you feel frustrated by that person, to like connect with that frustration. And just be, and like ask the frustration, like how much, how frustrated can you make me? Like, and then just be like, okay, and then just be, and then surrender to being frustrated and like, okay, like make me as frustrated as you can. Instead of like judging yourself and trying not to be frustrated, just let yourself be as frustrated as you can. And then what happens is the frustration goes away pretty quickly. And then you realize that the same thing doesn't make you frustrated anymore. <laughs> Because you like surrender to the like however it wants to make you feel, and then that part naturally integrates. Like the lazy Benoit, like will naturally integrate because there's not that layer of frustration between, you know, the exercising Benoit and the lazy Benoit. It does there's no no barrier anymore because you felt it, and like and integrated it and healed it. Cool. Let's let's be lazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, the the idea is uh, just to be. Sh Sure, I think it's, it's a perfect example. I think uh, so. We we get triggered, we get into the feeling of the trigger instead of mm -hmm. pushing it away, but to really, really, really feel it. And uh -huh. at some point, as we feel it, it's going through us, and then the lesson yeah. is is gained. Yeah. And then when the things happen again, we are not triggered as we used to be. Exactly. Cool. We get the yeah. formula. <laughs> nice. Okay, excellent. So um, that's awesome. That's that's. I think many people can relate to this first idea of success, external success, and I think we with this talk we give a bridge about to to arrive to this other kind of success, which is being free ourselves first, and then building the foundation, as you said, and then get out in the world and do the things that truly is our passion. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so just uh, for promotion sex, uh, sec, um, if people want to reach you, they go on your website, is it? Yeah, my website is IamPaulCooper.com. It's just one string, of, one string of words. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, uh, you can connect to me. From the website, there's you know email connections for Facebook and uh, cool. and all of that stuff on there. So and they can ask you questions if they want. Or they yeah, I, I do, yeah, I know for sure. Like uh, Facebook's a good place for that, or email. Um, and I do my best to answer them. Um, you know, I can't obviously I can't always get to all of them, but I do my best. So okay, <laughs> well, that's that's what we all want to give our yeah. best. <laughs> okay, excellent, Paul. That's been a very pleasant moment to uh, share all of this with you. And hopefully, it's, uh, I think, for me at least, it's uh, very helpful. So, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh.